Okay, if we go, so good afternoon again, everyone. Um, we uh, are EMAV, uh, and my name is Loïc Pavard. So the business uh, case that I want to um, explain this afternoon uh, was basically the, the, the following, if I have to do an outline. It was um, making a punctual inspection and detection of regulatory breaches and quality control regarding certifications of tree pruning and trimming activities. And uh, again, this will be a good link with what uh, Dr. Cato just illustrated before. We did this for a client, a customer, which is uh, VSGO. Um, they do generation and distribution and sale of power uh, and gas, serving more or less 700,000 uh, customers in Spain and Portugal. Just a few words about the current situation regarding um, trimming and pruning activities within power lines, uh, operation and maintenance sector. Um, it might not be clear to everyone, but it seems that a lot of those companies spend uh, more or less half of their budget um, with this kind of uh, checking the existence of uh, proximate vegetation close to the electrical network, and that can affect this electrical sector. The current situation is that what, what they have to do to uh, check and, and, and verify that this vegetation cannot affect in a, in a too deeply uh, manner, uh, well, they, they don't uh, use particular tool to identify these area and priorities. They usually have to walk and, and, and visual, uh, do visual inspection, or if they have to use um, other, other means, they actually use helicopter or, or planes, and this can be really costly. So we immediately see that um, the UAV can obviously bring some uh, interesting um, uh, feature here. And the, and the risks actually are, are, um, are various and diverse because, um, well, obviously there's the risk of potential uh, hazard or electrocution when there is direct contact from vegetation to uh, the wired lines, for example. There's the risk of uh, fires or injuries and obviously the risk of disruption of service, which for an electrical distributor can be a, of a big impact. Uh, the expected point cloud density was uh, 10 to 15 points per square meters, which obviously could be done by, by a surveyor without any difficulty. The topographic accuracy was 20 centimeters in absolute coordinate. Um, the, uh, the customers expected us to capture all elements uh, during, within an exhaustive acquisition, uh, tower structure, power cables, insulators, etc., and, and especially crossing lines or so. This is something that I will be speaking afterwards. Um, we had to inspect various corridors. Uh, the width was between 15 meters to 40 meters for the largest one. Um, we had to maintain a continuous and homogeneous data acquisition to ensure visibility of every cables and crossing lines, etc. Monitor the, tempera the temperature um, of, the of the different uh, elements at any time. And the expected uh, geodetic datum was UTM ETR S89. Um, so obviously to monitor the temperature, you understand that more than the LIDAR, we also had to embed a thermographic camera, a visual camera. So we had a, um, um, a complete UAV uh, respecting those requirements, obviously. So the, the minimum expected corridor width, as I told you before, according to the customer requirements, was 15 meters. Um, in some um, places where there were not particular um, elements on the ground, we achieved 180 meters of width for the corridor mapping with this, um, with this surveyor, flying more or less at a height of 20 meters above the wires, okay? So it, Depending on, on, on the height of the wires, it can represent maybe 40, 50 meters. As you can see on this kind of image, we were uh, successful into analyzing, for example, the, uh, checking the minimum distance compliance at every crossing line areas, which was one of the uh, customer requirements. At some point, a tower um, would receive two different line crossing, and it is important for them to check that there, there was no movement or, or that this, the distance at which the cable is crossing on the tower is respecting uh, the regulations. Um, so then, uh, after obtaining the uh, the last files, um, when you start uh, analyzing them, obviously, you start to be able to do this kind of activities, calculating tree pruning and trimming volumes uh, to make sure, for example, that in case of uh, in case of wind or because of uh, vegetation too close to the uh, electrical um, network, uh, we can recommend them more or less the volume that they should be thinking about trimming. Uh, so that they get sure they stay and they remain into the, the regulation. We can also identify the site full areas, um, meaning when, when there is uh, steep 
um, the fact that a tree could fall on the floor, uh, on the ground, could affect the, uh, the architecture, the structure, and this is also something that we are able to identify and to put in evidence with this kind of point cloud, point, point cloud files. So checking and detecting non-compliant distances between vegetation and power cables, um, bring some more additional value using predictive models of vegetation growth, and this is something that uh, we, we've spoken before and I will just illustrate after this. Um, also, we, we show here that um, even if the, uh, the point light file will give us the, uh, the situation of a wire at some point, um, we have to take into account that a ca an electrical cable has a natural movement uh, because of uh, natural climatic conditions and uh, it, this, this has also to be taken into account when you make this kind of a non-compliancy checking distance uh, with, uh, with the proximate vegetation, for example. This is a, an example of the point cloud file that we generated. Uh, uh, here we are seeing specifically a, a crossing line um, um, between a high power voltage crossing line and a medium voltage line. With the, wi the, the wires are actually thinner uh, in this case. And um, one difficulty that we, that we may also face with LiDAR is the, uh, the, the capacity for the LiDAR to detect both the wires of high voltage and the medium ones. So we had to find the proper density to be able to uh, focus on, on both uh, kind of um, electrical lines. I, I just want to um, uh, share with you a few market trends uh, that we estimate for, for the next upcoming years within trimming and pruning activities. Um, so it seems that the uh, data acquisition uh, sensors and operation for this kind of activity can, can be really done with LiDAR sensors. Um, obviously in some uh, very large area or large surface to cover, maybe the helicopter would be more economical than the UAV if you have to fly maybe 200 kilometers to, to make a really large survey. But the UAV can also be a very great tool to um, uh, access to um, uh, zone presenting orographic complexity. Then it seems that the, uh, the use of public reference vegetation database is something that we will see in the next upcoming years. This is also something that Dr. Cato just illustrated before. Um, the implementation of big data and predictive model can really support those uh, customers in terms of supporting their, um, uh, in terms of planning their trimming and pruning campaigns. Um, and, and also, obviously, if we can support them in, in planning those campaigns, uh, it, will, it will be translated into a, a decrease in costs uh, for those activities. Um, and this uh, represents what we've been uh, uh, working on after this operation uh, for Viesgo. Um, today you have several kind of um, uh, satellite images that have covered the whole planet, representing the land cover on our um, planet. And then uh, we have decided to use this kind of information as a first step to um, identify the zones or the area where those um, electrical distributors, those power grid actors, should put their focus on in function of the kind of vegetation you have on, on the ground, etc. A second step that uh, that we can that we can do after after uh, taking into consideration those public database uh, um, vegetation is uh, adding to this information data collection from from the from the field with the UAV. Um, so the UAV will here with lidar, for example, bring some more accuracy to those kind of uh, uh, database uh, will allow us to do visual and thermographic um, inspection, etc. And um, at EMAV we also beneficiate and we also take advantage of the, uh, all the expertise that we have within the um, uh, precision farming because it allows us to use the growth model vegetation that we have already elaborated to then be able to um, deliver to our customers some risk model. Uh, risk model, I, I'm speaking about being able to um, uh, cartography for them and identify for them the risk uh, of disruptive service at some point, so it can be one color here, the risk of triggering a fire because there is vegetation too close to um, uh, a wire, uh, for example, or, or, or the risk to not comply with the regulation, for example. I do thank you for your attention.